Alright hey guys, so I just wanted to jump on here really quick and talk about my first time flying with my puppy Yorkie. I know it's been a really long time since I've uploaded anything about me and Augie, but I did want to give you guys some tips and provide some hopeful hints for those of you who do plan on traveling with your fur babies anytime soon. First, if you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on those notifications so you don't miss any future updates, tips, tricks, and just keeping up with me and Augie in general. So in this video specifically, I am going to go over some tips to help make your fur baby feel a little more comfortable while traveling, a little less anxious. It is very anxiety inducing for them. They have no idea what's going on. Oh, do you want to say hi? Say hi. Not to me. Say hi. Say hi, Popo. Hi, Popo. Okay. Um, he definitely loves to be the center of attention, so he is going to continue to come and go and interrupt the video as he wishes. Because he's the prince in this house, so that's just what happens. Um, but yes, like I was saying in this video, I am... Okay, we're going to... To put you down <laughs> all right i had to close the window because i don't know if you can still hear it but they are doing construction in my development building more apartments you know for usual you know how that goes but anyway in this video specifically i am going to be talking about how to keep your pup comfortable kennel requirements and some recommendations that i have and then as well as airline restrictions and fees um, but please, if I do miss anything, if you do have any additional tips and just anything that you have tried and you are true to, please do leave a comment below. Help out your fellow pet parent community. We are all in this together um, and I would greatly appreciate it for the next time. But okay, so let's get into it. Firstly, I am going to talk about your pup's comfort, helping them feel a little less anxious. They have no idea what's going on right now. Just imagine the way that our stomachs feel when we're taking off and landing. Just the ears popping, all of those things that we experience, they experience as well just tenfold because they're much smaller than we are. CBD treats work like a charm. I would recommend the Quiet Moments Calming Aid by Nature Vet. Um, it has a little melatonin in it, so depending on your pup size, and how much you give them it really like really pay attention to the directions on the back or oh, he is four pounds um i started off with just giving him half of one you know he fell asleep and made him a little more calm i've also tried premium care calming treats as well again all oh, he is only four pounds and is said to give one treat per 25 pounds and i gave him one of them and they didn't really work that well but some of the reviews say that they have worked for other people. It just really depends on your dog, their digestion, um, how much they've eaten. But similar to how we feel and we are affected by the different things and supplements that we take. I'll link both of them down below so you can go ahead and look up the reviews, do your own research. But those are definitely two brands of treats that I've tried for Augie. And I recommend the Quiet Moments Calming Aid. Like, again, the melatonin does what it has to do they are safe obviously they're puppy treats um but for your own comfort please make sure you do do your own research next thing that i would suggest and recommend for your puppy and helping them feel calm and safe is putting some of their favorite toys um into the kennel lining the bottom of the kennel with their favorite blanket he wants to play right now he is very needy right baby Hey baby! Yes, so lining the bottom of the kennel with their favorite blanket, something that's familiar to them, that's comforting to them. Whatever reminds them of home and whatever you've used to get your pup comfortable with being in their crate. The kennel is much smaller than the crate, but again, we want to give them that same safe zone feeling. And granted, like, this was Augie's first time flying, so He's freaking out, he's whining and whimpering and a little more anxious. There was a cat right next to us and the cat was just like looking at him like, mm. So I would recommend giving them the calming tree about 30 minutes prior to flight. You must keep your pet in the kennel the entire time while as soon as you get through TSA, while you're at the gate, while you're on board, the pet must stay in the kennel. So I would say 30 minutes prior to going to the airport and they should be fine. I did bring all these treats to give him some treats 
in between just open the kennel a little bit on the top stuff a treat in there to make him feel safe and comfortable and not as in trouble and on punishment or something like that next thing that i'm going to get into is kennel requirements um again a kennel is basically like a little traveling bag for your animal in our case for your puppy to go into um it must fit under the seat below in front of you as if it were your personal item typically this would be in a window or a middle seat aisle seats they don't have enough room for the kennels to fit under if you have a very small kennel it may be able to fit but just from the requirements of the size of the kennel that size kennel is not fitting in the aisle row so typically they'll put you into the window seat or the middle seat size right under you and it should fit perfectly as if it were your personal item. You cannot sit in an exit row if you have a pet with you just because most airlines don't really want pets in an exit row in case of an emergency. The kennel must be 19 inches long by 13 inches wide by nine and a half inches high. If you have a soft kennel, it can be as tall as 10 and a half inches high because again, when you're pushing it under, it'll compress a little bit but anything more than 10 and a half inches probably wouldn't fit now this is the medium size original sherpa you can get it from petco um i will tag that down below as well it is 17 inches long 11 inches wide and 10 and a half inches tall again it's a little over that nine inches that is um by a guideline but it still fits right under smooth fit, and we're good perfectly under the seat is not going anywhere it's a little bit of room on the sides and it fits nice the medium size original sherpa fits any cat or dog up to 16 pounds hi baby he is definitely nowhere near 16 pounds he had enough space in there to run around in circles as he was doing knocking the kennel over because he just could not stay still until his treat kicked in so another kennel that i would recommend and i previously had it before the sivton carrier by amazon um i will link it down below here is a picture of it right here um it expands on all four sides so it gives your pet some mobility while you're waiting at your gate um you cannot have it expanded while you're in flight but if you are someone who likes to um get to the airport early and you know two hours before however long you're there and you want to have you want to give your pet some mobility you don't want to have them held captive for too long i would highly recommend this one as well it's airline approved um fits within the metrics as a little pizzazz and luxury for your pet okay so last thing that i'm going to talk about are airline restrictions and fees um, most airlines charge $125 for a carry-on pet fee each way. So if you are having a round trip ticket, that's $250 a trip. Unfortunately, emotional support animals are no longer allowed to fly for free. During COVID, this has changed. Um, the only pets that are allowed to fly fee-free are registered, qualified, and certified service animals. So you do have to have a certificate showing that your animal is trained. Um, and if you do have a trained service animal, then they do not have to be in a carrier or a kennel. They can walk on a leash throughout the airport and they will be perfectly fine. I did see that a lot of service animals had like a red jacket on them, I guess to signify that they were a service animal. Um, but yes, must be fully trained. And Ogi is not trained. He, he has home training, but he he loves people. He is super friendly. I could not get away with him being a trained, certified service animal. Not gonna happen for me. But if when you can make that happen, please do it because one hundred and twenty-five dollars each way is highway robbery, like highway robbery. Another thing that I did want to mention is that every airport has pet and service animal relief centers. So here you see that they basically have somewhere for them to use the restroom, a little fire hydrant here, wheelie pad, waste bags in here, a nice sink for you to wash your hands and do everything that you have to do. Last thing that I do want to get into, specific to American Airlines, um, apparently 
the pet kennel is considered your carry-on item so you cannot have a personal item and a carry-on bag and your pet kennel you can only have a personal item and your pet kennel as your carry-on so when i was leaving charlotte going to laguardia no one really enforced that for me they basically told me that my pet kennel was going to be considered my personal item and i brought my carry-on bag onto the flight put it in the overhead bin oh he went under me we were good personal item carry-on bag but when i was leaving laguardia and i was checking in augie they literally made me check my bag there's a little excerpt here on the fact that your pet is considered your carry-on item and you are only allowed the pet kennel and a personal item really you need 155 dollars to fly because if you're bringing your pet with you you're more than likely not going to have a little backpack full of clothes i don't know about y'all but i pack a lot i pack a lot and i was only going for three days so it's really 155 hours to fly with an animal, just saying. So that was my experience flying with Augie for the first time. If I did miss anything, please do let me know. Um, flying with an animal can be very anxiety inducing for both the parent and the pet. Hopefully this helps make your experience and your process a little more smooth. So again, feel free to leave any comments down below if I did forget anything and see you next time. Bye. Bye. Talk to me nice. Talk to me honestly.